friend, the president of the Zionist Organization of America, who was called by the World Wall Street Journal one of the most influential Jews in the United States. I call upon Maud Klein to address the audience. Thank you, Reuben and rabbis, and all the heart, and all the committed Jews here in this audience. We all feel a sense of deep sadness, misery, rage, anger, and understandable fear. <laughs> so many Jews have suffered so great a loss at least 1,500 precious Jewish souls have been murdered and taken from us. 4,000 Jews have been injured and 200 have been kidnapped in the most inhuman and unspeakable way. <laughs> we come before God to pray for the missing and for the dead and for the hostages and for those who love them. Those suffering must be shown they are not alone, we are not alone. Israel is a peaceful, human rights loving country, but we are fierce when stirred to anger. We now are embraced by the extraordinary courage of national Jewish unity. As hundreds of thousands of Jews have answered the call to rid the world of this barbaric evil of the Muslim Arab Hamas, Hezbollah and Iran. But thank God Almighty, the Jewish people of Israel have a powerful, motivated, talented Israel Defense Force of young, able, strong, skilled, and trained Jewish young men and women. <laughs> who will do whatever it takes, whatever it takes, to ensure that the Muslim Arab terrorist group of Hamas Nazis can never do this again to us and will surely go the way of the German Nazis. Soon, they will never be heard from again. In the Passover Haggadah, we read every Pesach quote, in every generation they rise up against the Jews to destroy us. And the Holy One, God Almighty, blessed be He who rescues us from their hands. We have suffered throughout the ages, as the Haggadah has tells us. We were slaves in Egypt. Haman tried to destroy the Jewish people. The Greeks outlawed Judaism. In 624, Muhammad's, Muhammad's Muslims decapitated 600 Jews. We had the first and second Christian Crusades. They blamed us for the Black Plague and murdered us throughout Europe. They expelled the Jews from England, France, Hungary and Austria in 1492 from Spain and Portugal. We suffered pogroms and the monstrous Holocaust. Even the reestablishment of Israel, six Arab nations rose up and tried to destroy us. But ladies and gentlemen, the resilience and the perseverance and the courage of the Jewish people and with the help of Almighty God, we overcame every single challenge and we Jews will do so again. need to be learned, which could have prevented this temporary nightmare. One, had Israel, and it's painful for me to, to say these things, we have to understand it, had Israel not forcibly removed 9,000 Jews and our IDF from northern Gaza, this likely could never have happened. The Jews and the IDF here in Gaza 
would surely have learned of the Hamas's odious plans and the IDF would have been at the border to rescue Jews. Israel can never give away any of our holy land to a terrorist Hamas or a terrorist Palestinian regime. Never. For doing so only shows Jewish weakness and energizes our Muslim Arab enemies in Gaza and Judea and Samaria. It gives them more land from which to better operate their ugly plans. No more concessions. No more concessions. No more concessions. Concessions. No more concessions. Yes, you can only make peace with your enemies but only with enemies who no longer wish to remain our enemies. But Hamas and Abbas wish to remain our enemies. You cannot make peace with them. We also have to understand bitterly, our U.S. government gave Iran $16 billion in the last few months. And this government ignored all the sanctions on the Islamic Republic of Iran, enabling them to earn $50 billion in oil revenues in the last few years, which they've used for terrorist activities and funding Hamas and Hezbollah. This has encouraged and energized and strengthened Iran and Hamas. Our U.S. government has wrongly and publicly condemned the Prime Minister of Israel for veering away, he falsely says, from democratic values. This government attacked Israeli democratic domestic policies. They funded anti-Israel government protests and refused to meet Israel's Prime Minister at the White House. This has encouraged and strengthened Iran and Hamas and other terrorist parties. We should have spoken out loudly not to allow our government to have done these things. <laughs> and this administration and their party have refused to publicly condemn our own Jew-hating, Israel-haters in Congress, like Representative Tlaib, Omar, and others. Our president, our president has even publicly praised them, saying this, I admire your intellect and your passion. I admire your concern for so many other people. You're a fighter for God. I thank you for being the great fighter. He said about Rashida Tlaib and Ilan Omar. We must publicly condemn him for this and make it clear we won't tolerate such ugly, ugly remarks. <laughs> and almost no Jewish groups complain when our U.S. government appointed numerous hostile to Israel, pro-BNS people, BDS people, in important posts that affect Israel. This government appointed Robert Malley to be the chief U.S. negotiator to Iran. He is overtly pro-Iran, pro anti-sanctions, and pro-Hamas. And almost no Israeli, American Jewish organization said a word about this. He appointed Maher Bitar to be director of intelligence at the NSC. His previous post, he was executive director of Students for Justice in Palestine, a vicious anti-Israel, anti-Semitic group. <laughs> Maher Bitar held seminars at Georgetown University entitled, How to Demonize Israel. And we Jews said nothing when he was appointed to this important post. He appointed Hadi Amar as the chief negotiator, yes, the chief negotiator between the U.S. and the Israel and the Palestinians. Hadi Amar has publicly proclaimed on several occasions the Intifada terror war against the Jews inspires me. This monster said it inspires him seeing Jews killed, and he promotes boycotting Israel, divesting from Israel, and sanctioning Israel. And this government has supported many more anti-Israel posts, and no Jewish organization said one word, except I'm honored to say we at ZOA complain bitterly. These appointments have energized and strengthened and encouraged Iran, Hamas, and others. 
and Jewish groups and Deborah Lipstadt have praised the definition of for anti-Semitism that Nexus uses. Nexus, their definition, a part of the war against anti-Semitism says, if you oppose Israel's existence, that's not anti-Semitism, that's simply your opinion. And Deborah Lipstadt and our administration have put this as part of our program to fight anti-Semitism. And no one but us spoke out. We must condemn this plan by Biden and by Deborah Lipstadt. Our enemies saw all this. They saw this in their own courage. They were energized by our government weakening support for the Jews and the Jewish state. And now, as was mentioned, the U.S. government is proposing to give $100 million to Gaza Palestinians. What does our government say? Oh, they're innocent. They're not part of Hamas. We just want to help these nice Gaza Palestinians. But the Gaza Palestinians elected Hamas, and new polls show a clear majority of them continue to support Hamas. In addition, their own polls show 70 to 90 percent of the Palestinians support murdering Jews. They are not innocent, ladies and gentlemen, and we should not help them. <laughs> It's like helping the citizens of Nazi Germany in the 30s and 40s when 85% supported the Nazis. And by the way, a new poll came out this very morning asking American Muslims, U.S. Muslims, do you support what Hamas did to Israel? 58% said yes. We should understand that. We should understand who our enemies are and speak out against them. And don't worry about being called Islamophobic. A phobia means you have no reason to fear something. We have a reason to fear the Muslims. <laughs> and why are we giving aid? Why shouldn't their co-religionists, Saudi Arabia and Qatar, if they want to give aid, they should give the aid, not us. <laughs> and, and we should certainly say, as was said before, we should not give any aid until all 210 hostages are released and the Hamas Charter, where Article 7 calls for the murder of every Jew is publicly retracted. The Hamas Charter says in Article 7, the hour of judgment shall not come until the Muslims fight the Jews and kill them. The Jews will hide behind trees and stones and each tree and stone will say, oh, Mr. Muslim, oh, servant of Allah, there is a Jew behind me. Come and kill him. This is their charter. They want to kill every Jew in the world. And we want to give money to these people? Nothing until they retract the charter and release the hostages. That's for sure. And President Biden <laughs> and Secretary Blinken flew to Israel this week. They said some nice words. They said we'll resupply, uh, hopefully when you need it, Mr. and Mrs. Israel. And I appreciated that. But they never mentioned Iran. They never condemned it. depraved rallies on college campuses supporting Hamas. <laughs> and they continues to say, we need a Palestinian state, which will, of course, be a terrorist state controlled by Iran. This is no time to call for any concessions to a terrorist dictatorship and no time to call for a terrorist Palestinian state. <laughs> and I might add, <laughs> As you all know, at these rallies, these, these ignorant, racist, hateful students and professors condemn Israel for committing genocide against the Palestinians. Genocide. Genocide. Israel warns Arabs in apartment buildings to leave before they bomb it. They drop leaflets saying to get out of the way. They tell the Arabs we won't do anything until you get to the south so you won't be hurt. This is a hell of a genocide program. And I might also add, in 1948, there were 150,000 Palestinian Arabs in this area. Today, there are 2 million, two mi from 150,000 to 2 million. Whoever is in charge of Israel's genocide program must be fired immediately. It's not working. I must finally add, but most troubling, Secretary Blinken, 
met with Israel's war cabinet for seven hours, unprecedented. President Biden had long meetings with Israeli officials as well. In all my reports I got from behind the scenes, I am told they are pressuring Israel to delay going into Gaza, to refrain from attacking Hezbollah in Lebanon, who is already launching missiles against Israel. We must demand, let Israel take whatever military actions it deems necessary to protect its citizens. Stop pressuring Israel. Stop pressuring Israel. Let my people go and fight and destroy Hamas and Hezbollah. Let Israel defend itself. Let Israel defend itself. And I love how they're telling Israel not to fight disproportionately. Not to fight dis Let me tell you what our generals have said in the last 20 years before we went to war. They said, we have to be the biggest SOB on the block. America should enter the fight with every bit of force available or not at all. We must go in with full force from the beginning rather than escalate into a, a quagmire or don't go in at all. We must use overwhelming U.S. force to assure success at minimum, minimum risk to Americans in uniform. We must use all the force necessary and do not apologize for going in big if that's what it takes. If being powerfully disproportionate in destroying America's enemies, Israel has to have that same right, Mr. and Mrs. America. <laughs> Remember, we Jews did not come to Eretz Israel as colonialists. We came neither like the British imperialists, nor like the French colonizers in Algeria, nor like the English and Dutch settlers in South Africa. We did not come like immigrants seeking a new continent, a new homeland. We came back to our home as the inhabitants of a country who have been driven away from it by force. There is no occupation. There was never a, pa a, a Palestinian state called Palestine. Palestine is a Roman word. It was never their country. They can't even pronounce the letter P. They say Palestine. They can't even pronounce it. You think they named it? It's their land. It's ridiculous. And I will end by saying, proudly, we Jews arose from onslaughts throughout the Middle Ages from pogroms in the 1800s, we miraculously arose again from the ashes of Auschwitz to reestablish our beautiful state of Israel. That is the lesson of our history, that the indomitable spirit of the Jews, with our belief in ourselves, and our culture, and our talent, and our Torah, and an almighty God, we can never be destroyed. And so the miracle of a Jewish state, due to another miraculous victory against great odds, a victory over 40 million Arabs, where the Jews were vastly outnumbered and outarmed, and yet we overcame and defeated those who would destroy us. <laughs> Throughout our history, we've had many extraordinary events that saved us, that helped us, <laughs> and that'll happen again. Who would have believed that even though Israel was the David and the huge Arab world was the Goliath, we won the wars in 48, 56, 67, and 73. It was a miracle. Who would have believed that Israel, which began with 600,000 Jews 75 years ago, now has 7 million Jews in Israel? It's a miracle. Who would have believed that Israel represented 6% of the world's Jewry in 48? Today, half the world's Jews live in Israel. Extraordinary. Who would have believed that Israel would have made the desert bloom as the Torah promised? The Holy Land will remain barren until the Jews return, an extraordinary statement in the Torah. But that's just what happened. It's a miracle. Only God who controls history would know that it will remain barren. We must believe in God. We must keep Shabbos, Kashrut, the mitzvahs uh, uh, as best we can. Who would have believed that Israel would have gone from the Iranian economy to the government of the world's leaders or microchips and other high-tech areas? Who to believe that Jewish state has more scientists per capita, who publish more scientific papers per capita, more musicians and orchestras per capita than any country to the face of the world? Extraordinary. And who would have believed that the Jewish state would produce yeah. a dozen Nobel laureates, the highest per capita in the entire, the entire world? And who would have believed that we now have more students studying in yeshivas in Israel than at any time in Jewish history? And who would have believed that Orthodox Jews make up 40% of the officers in the Israeli army. 
It's extraordinary. And who would have believed that for the first time in history, a country was paying black people, Ethiopian Jews, to its shores, not to be slaves, but to be a free and proud people. Of that we could be proud, and who would believe that after 2,000 years of dispersion, there are now over 500,000 Jews in the holy city of Jerusalem, 500,000 Jews in the holy land of Yehuda Shimon, given to the Jewish people by the Lord our God, King of the universe, that after 2,000 years, we Jews have sovereignty over all of the historically holy Jewish city of Jerusalem, never to be divided again. We must be strong, be not afraid, for God is with us. The cause of Israel is moral and just, for must act and speak out with courage. Truth, justice, and God are on the side of Eretz Israel. With your help, with the strength and will of the Israeli people, with the power and strength of the IDF, with the help of Almighty God, the people of Israel shall dwell in their holy land for eternity. The Torah promises that Israel is the Jewish homeland and that it will always be the Jewish homeland. And the Jewish people will be an eternal people. The Torah promises us. And unlike politicians, God keeps his promises. Thank you very much.